you know, I don't know, I don't know if I can live without the Lord. Amen. I don't know if I can yeah. even face tomorrow if I didn't have nope. Jesus' blood that covers me. Amen. And that assurance that I'm going to get home to see that. Yes. I don't understand how people do it, but of course, I was once there. I never. I didn't think I needed the Lord. How surely He has proved me wrong. And I'm so glad I'm covered with His blood. Amen. 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 Great. Amen. Anyone else? Got testimony they want to share. Anyone at all? Julius wants you and your wife come on sing the choir. I know they can sing. We heard them sing at the conference. <laughs> Somebody would like to come this time and take up the <laughs> evening offering? Five eighty eight. You can open up your handbooks to five eighty eight. Just mind the Lord see me. Well, Charlie, you want to bless your brother? Father in heaven, as we come to the throne of grace once again this hour, just thank you for all your blessings, Lord. Thank you for the gathering tonight, Lord. We pray right now, Lord, that you bless us. Once it's asked to give tonight, Lord, we will not fail to give you the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. testimony on the heart before you have a prayer request. Anyone at all? Somebody got a special request on the heart. Okay, remember that request. Someone else? Remember our Zachary called tonight and she was going to go this week and they called and said they were bringing her some real estate. Gary Thomas started tonight. We did rock, paper, scissors, and I went and I'm at church tonight and he had to stay home with six dollars. I love the Lord, Dave. Amen. Amen. I'm praising. I know 
He's already taken care of. Yep. Someone else. All right, Dave, I got to speak. Sorry, I was letting it, kind of holding it in, but I don't know how hard I'm beating. I'm going to watch my dog. I'm going to disobey God, so I got to stop. Let me tell, right let me tell you about my friend Jesus, who I really talk to like all the time. I told God one night, I said, well, I don't know if you that anyways. I was praying, and I told God, you know, I'm not Moses, I'm not Abraham, but I want to walk with you like Abraham did. I don't want to just serve God. I want to serve God and be His friend. I want to be a friend of God. And I'll tell you something. Sure. I think that friendship is surely accepted. I, I got some small little quirky things, but it's just kind of funny. Um, I was asked to uh, help with the DBS, and I just made a joke. Sure, as long as there's Mountain Dew. I was just joking. I didn't care. Sure enough, they brought in more Mountain Dew than I can handle. <laughs> And then, I, I, I told you guys I thought like I was going to go to college and I thought I had all that planned. But it just came to me, all of that is vain. I'm going to go up there and none of it's going to be for God or for His glory. And I said, okay, I will obey you because I trust you. Sure enough, today I sent the letter. And I'm not saying anything bad about college, okay? That's what God wants you to do, but I don't need you to do what God wants you to do. And I said, I went ahead and sent in the uh, thing I wasn't going to go. The same day, I got a call, go in, I got the job. The first stage of what I feel is calling me to do is complete. I've also wanted something now for a little while, and I'm a few days short of reaching the second stage complete of the checklist that I have got here and what I need to do. So he's opening up the doors that's for right, me. That's right, He's going through. And that's not all. I hope I don't want to take up too much time, but I just had stuff hit my heart. Jamie, I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you the truth. One night I was just awake. And I had, I want to say testimonies, but it's like I wake up and it's just like many sermons hitting me. I don't know what it is. Well, I actually, I believe it's God, but it just hits me, and, and you, you can't sleep. You cannot leave it. It's like you have to listen to it. Praise the Lord. Amen. My heart starts beating. I'm sitting there sometimes in my chair, and it's by myself. It's not even with people. And I just feel just something right up inside of me. And I, just, I want to start praising God. I just want to throw my hands up and say, thank you, Lord. But I want to tell you about my friend Jehovah. My friend Jehovah has done absolutely so much for me. Everything I wanted. Literally, like giving me. Amen. And he's, he continues to bless me every day. And I'm just thankful for what he does. And you know, we we come in here all the time and we pray for revival. But I'm really starting to learn the revival can happen, but it's not going to happen unless we stand up and make it happen. Right? I'll try. I'll stand up now. I'll tell you the truth. I get nervous doing this kind of stuff. But, but if it's what God wants. I'm going to obey him. That's right, right. You know, because I believe that if I listen to him, tell him we can have a revival. Right. You know, and I, I really want a revival. I, I want to help. I want to help do that. And I also thought, too, you know, as the church, we, we think about, I know older people might think, what's going to happen when we pass? Well, what, you know, who's going to be the church? So I want to tell you something, guys. This is God's church from the day it's been started all the way to the day it ends. All right, I, I, I'm sure you guys know this. Christ died 2,000 years ago. And there is no way that any of us would be here if God didn't call up His people from each generation. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're 15 years old or 55 years old. If you're God, you're God. If you're not, you're not. So God has a remnant in every generation. And I know even in my generation, He's going to call those people out. He really is. He knows, he knows his, his generation. He's going to call them out. And I just... So I just... I, it's kind of hard for me. I'm not... Like I said, I'm not... This isn't a public speech. This is me trying to obey God. And I just, I think, you know, Help me more. I don't want to be a product of my generation. I don't, I don't want to be a product of the media or the false gods. You know, we worship, you know, people might say, you know, we, we don't serve the gods they used to serve back then. They used to bow to bow and all these other gods. And they said that we don't serve God. I, I beg to differ. I think we actually do serve false gods these days. I really believe that. I really believe that my generation, every generation, we serve false gods. Whether it's our leaders, Rather, it's like the musicians we look up to, or the celebrities and movie actors. We worship false gods just as much as they did back then. You can't tell me otherwise. And uh, the other thing I think of, you know, people, people want to, people want to serve God. But they only want, they only want part of it. You know, I don't really resonate much with ice cream. I remember whenever you preached about the big bucket of ice cream, you don't want the little bucket. You want the big bucket. I don't resonate a whole lot with ice cream. It's okay. <laughs> But when it comes to me, I'm like Mount Dew. But see, I don't want the 12 man standing and sitting there. I want the whole two of you. I can't go a second without thinking about God. 
And you know, I want to say this, and please don't take this the wrong way, but even, there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. That's right. But, but even if there was no other way, Jesus is such a friend of mine, I would rather go His way. Even Amen. if there was multiple ways, there's no other way I'd want to go through Jesus. Because he's, he's more than just my King and my Lord, He's my friend. I literally know He's my friend. The Father, you know, has become, they, have, they have been awesome to me. They have walked with me. They have taken care of me. Praise the Lord. And, and you know, we, we wonder, how, how do we serve God? How, how do we please God? We have to do it in spirit and truth. But most importantly, we have to communicate. See, we've got to have Christ. Without Christ, there's nothing. Oh, you have to be obedient. It doesn't matter what God's calling you to do. You have to have obedience. You've got to listen. You can say you serve God with your lips, but if you're not doing it with your heart, right. you're not serving God. Amen. Amen. Well, you you got to be meek. you got to have meekness. Now, I know right now it's quite hard to talk about being meek. But if you guys know me, usually I walk around with my head down when really should be looking up. But you fill me up with the Holy Ghost, I'll come at you like i got a sword in my hand ready to go. Amen. But you have to be meek. you got to humble yourself. Humble yourself and God will go through this time. You've got to have mercy. We all have things that people have done to us, but you have to forgive people. If you do not forgive, even just one thing, God will not forgive you. You must forgive everybody. If there's something you don't to you, for example, call them up. I don't care what they done to you, what they will do. He wasn't here. And other things, you, you got to have unity. People say you don't need to go to church. You need to go to church, okay? If you take one pencil, you'll snap that pencil quick. You take about 20 pencils and that, unless you know, you're some huge guy, you're not snapping those pencils. You've got to have unity. You will fall away quicker than anything. If I stop going to the church, I will right. fall away quicker than anything. You've right. got to have communion with God. You have to have communion with God. That's right. And you got to neglect. You have to neglect your flesh. Man, I know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, we all like TV. I don't really like TV. I don't, I don't. You have to neglect it. I know there's stuff we enjoy, but sometimes you just got to throw it in the trash and you, gotta, you have to neglect it. Uh, I forgot where I'm at. Where I'm not communicating how you spell that one again. I, okay. You got to have integrity and you got to have dignity. You cannot say, I'll do this and then not do it. You have to have integrity, guys. If you don't have integrity, you and God are not going to get along because all I'm, every, every time God told me he's going to do something, he's done. Uh, and everywhere I read God said, I'll do it, he's done. He may have done it years later, but he's done. And, uh, sorry, I keep forgetting where I'm at. I'm forgetting how to spell here. <laughs> Alright, now see, see, you got to have charity. You have to walk in charity. I'll tell you the truth, guys. I'm tired today. I told Jamie I'm tired today. You know? But there is no other place I'd rather be than right here in God's house, serving the Lord and serving others. Because, you know, I want, when, God, when Christ looks at me, when God looks down at me, now listen, I understand my works will not justify me. I cannot earn God's merit. That's through Christ. But I do believe that Christ's blood applied the works I do can bring a smile to God's face. And so whenever God looks down at me, I don't want him to see anything when he said, well, you did this, but you did this, but I want him to, I want him to go say, they compelled you to do the first mile, I compelled you to do the second mile, but you've done the third mile because you love me and you're my friend. You see, I say he's my friend, but I also have a friendship, I have the end of the deal that I got to keep up. And so I don't want to just go to the second mile, I want to go to the third mile because I want him, I don't want there to be any doubts. I want him to know I love you and, and the only way, like, he would have to want to look over me because I don't have my hands stretched forth so far into the heavens saying, send me the Lord, that he would have to intentionally look me by. My hand would be right there and straight. He can't even look past me. He sees me. And what was he? you got to be... Where was I at? Sorry. See? See? Look at that. So that's Cherry. Hey. 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 I say you, 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 yeah, you agonize with God. You, know, you have to be able to agonize with God. And you, you really got to pray. I mean, I would say pray, but you know, that really wants to stop communicating. You have to pray. And he, you have to be thankful for what you have. I mean, I know we all we all want things. I, I want things. You know, I'm young. I still, I still want some things. But I'm thankful for what I have. And we have to be thankful for what we have. And he, which is really one of the ultimates, Christ first, and after this, you have to be effectual. You have to listen to the Spirit. You have to be effectual. We, we can serve God on Sundays, and, and we can drop new things, but if we're not effectual, we're just wasting our time. Yeah. Really, we're wasting our time, we're wasting resources. We have to be effectual, and we have to go out, and we've got to get our people. Guys, revival is possible. I don't care what you say. I don't care if it's 2016, 
it, it's 2017. Things have only changed because we've changed it. That's right. Honestly, the Word of God hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. Right. Everything has changed because we've changed it. And I'm not going to play the blame game saying it's the generation before me. No, like, I, I would rather focus on what I can do now. <coughs> and you know, whenever, I don't know if I'll make it to the point of death, Jesus will be back or not, but if I do, on my obituary, I, I, I don't, it doesn't have to say, oh, former president or a former billionaire, what I strive for the most. I, I want it to say, there is a servant of the Lord Amen. as God. That's what I want. I want to be known as the servant of the Lord. That's the ultimate title of that seat. I, I know I'm, I'm, you know I'm a child of God, I'm a son, but I get a thrill out of serving God. Like That's my that's my thrill. And I want to be known as the servant of the Lord. And so, I got taking up some time. Thank you, Jamie. I don't want you to ever feel like I try to override you. It's, it's quite the opposite. I, I actually... I want to help you. I want to support you. You know, it's been a blessing serving under, listening to you minister. And honestly, if I wasn't at Puritan Church, I'm not talking about any other churches. I'm just saying, if I wasn't at this church where God called me to be, I don't know where I'd be that I'd be here where I am today. So it's been a blessing serving under you. And another thing is, I know people fall away. And I know Charlie used the analogy of the sheepdog in one of his jokes. But it's not, sometimes it's not always the sheepdog's fault that people fall. Sometimes sheep will just do what they want to do. It's not always your fault. You, you, you've done great. I, honestly, I think you've done great as a pastor. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to be here. Lord willing, I'll be here for. No. So, Lord willing, I'll be here for a lot longer. I hope to do more. I'm far from finished. I, mean, I really hope my story is not even close to being finished. I realize, like, I don't want to exalt myself. I'll tell you, I want to do a lot in life. I don't want to just set up. So I really want to go far with God. I want to go as far as I possibly can. Amen. I mean, I, I like I said, I told God, I'm not Moses. I'm not Abraham. God bless him. And God has blessed him. God continues to bless him. But in this generation, my generation, I want to be a friend of God. I really do. I, I, I want to be a friend of God. I, I want to see this church grow. And not only this church, but I, I want to see this church also start to commune with other churches. That doesn't mean we have to close down our church and go to but we got to support other churches, guys. We have BBS, and BBS is great. But what if every church in the county can have huge BBS? Now, at the end of the day, isn't this about souls? You know, and, and we have these denominations in this, and I, I can't stand it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's great to be out here at the Free Will Baptist. But imagine the power we would have if we actually all stood together. Uh, if my grandma said something, I was a few years ago, and saw all those things. And if those people got down to pray, was it a singer? You watch these televangel stuff, and you see all these churches. Think about how many people are actually in the church on Sunday. They all pray for the same thing. God could not hear that. I mean, if God hears this one voice, how much, you know, all these voices. And it's just, this, this generation, we, we need to move towards more unity. I'm not saying we all close up shop and leave it. Because we got to get the churches together. We, we, we have to. I mean, I understand stuff has to happen for the rapture to happen, but while we're here, we got so much work to do. Like, I, I mean, it, it's kind of like, I don't even necessarily even want to sleep at night. I just want to work. You know, my mom? Am I taking too long? I, I, my mom's always like, you know, if you're going to have some grandchildren, I think about that too, as I'm getting a little bit older. If you have maybe have a, you know, woman, a godly woman to love and all that. But, you know, honestly, at this point in my life, I wouldn't be a good partner at all because I'd rather be out fishing with Jesus. Late night, I'd rather be out working with God. That's nothing towards relationships, but I'm just saying, I would rather be working with God 24-7. I kind of like business. And what I feel he's calling me in to do, you know, I, I always like to be a, a, have a partner with things. My other things I like having too. And I'll tell you, every human partner I've had, it, it's went horrible. But now I finally have something God's called me to do, and I have the best partner I have ever had in my life. Amen. And that's Amen. God as my partner. Blessed and I know with Him, as my friend and as my God, I plan to go very far. It's not about me, it's about God's glory. But if God, if, if God will, if God will allow it and bless me, I want to be a servant, and I want to, I want to go as far as I can. I, I want to help, I want to shake down strongholds with God. I, I, I love being in church, but I don't want to just, just sit in church on Sundays and go on this the rest of the week. No, I want to serve Him. I want to serve God in my life. I want to make the world, I want the world to shake. I want the world to tremble. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go out battle on demons. I've heard Jamie say this too. I don't want to go out battle on demons with the devil, but I want the enemy to know my name. Not, not because of me, because I'm powerful. Because I'm not. But because they know 
That is God's strength. That is, that is God's servant. They know my name. Amen. I, want, I want the enemy to know my name and know that when I step in the room, that God is with me. It's not me. Because I'm, I'm nothing. I will fail every time if I try to do something myself. But when I step in the room, there's an adversary in that room. I won't fear to come upon them because they know God is with the man who went to the room and that he's going to be faithful to God. And that they will have no safe haven. I, there is no safe haven for the flesh in my body. Yes, I'm tempted, but I, I, I will not allow temptation, not even the slightest, that there is no safe haven. And I want to go further than that, and I want to make no safe haven for the adversary to even here. I want there to be no safe haven for demons, the devil. I want God to be everywhere I go. All right, guys, I know I've taken a little bit of time. I guess when you're going to get back to singing, I was just on my heart, and I have to obey God. Amen. I have to obey God. So thank you, guys. What a You know, it's good to see some of our younger guys that got saved step out for the Lord, you know. Need some of that to rub off on some of the other, some of us other people, right? Us older ones. Come on. A lot of what he just said was exactly what I preached this morning. He wasn't even here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's a good man. Has anybody else got a prayer request from the heart before we get this other song ready? Sure, we all got unspoken request by uplifting hands. Ten thousand reasons. Ten thousand reasons. <laughs> Fellowship one another, and we'll get around the altar for getting in prayer. Say no. 
there anyone else got a request on the heart of God? Okay, remember that request. Anyone else? The other day, you know, each yeah. one of us has someone in our family that we'd let yeah. be here or not. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, I was telling them, I can't imagine my grandson or my son or my great grandson. You know, that's how many generations are sitting over here watching that boy stand up here. As a mother, I sure would like to see my baby up here. Amen. I want you to pray. We got my, I want my children here serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody else? Remember Larry and Vicky and all our family, and remember Sarah's dad. Okay, remember all his requests. Anyone else? Remember Holly and yeah. Nate and Lisa and Jeff and Lee and Mary tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, remember that request. Anyone else? Just remember our country. Yes. yes. Remember service tonight. And then we call some family. Okay, remember that request. Two roll walls from all family. All right. Anyone else? Most of my dads. Better and Cody Meadows. All right. Remember that's your question. Remember that too. She goes all the way. If all hearts clear, let's take these petitions to the Lord this time. Brother John Wells. You think it's out, brother? Father, we thank you for this Christmas, Lord, for they are far from home. Tell them you want all the Lord to thank you for all your good service. Father, we pray right now, Lord, to all the much country, bless you all, bless you all, and 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 bless you all
give you a few minutes for testimony or special singing. We've got some special singing here tonight. Well, I'm glad to be here, glad to be a Christian, and I don't think you ought to have to drag testimonies out of people. Amen. We're thankful, and we should be, and we are blessed, and we're really blessed in this country that we've gotten to place that we just start on the school do nothing. But I'm so thankful for all that God has done for me and as the boy was talking about friend, he's been my best friend. I thought, you know, there's been no one that I could tell everything to. But I yeah. can the great Holy Spirit. I thought I was as I was studying uh, Joyce Myers, she has a, a I do a, a daily devotional and she was talking about the Holy Spirit uh, being the one that's just right there that Man. He wants to help us. He's just waiting on us to call on him for help. And how many times we want to take that thing on ourselves when he's waiting right by there and come on. Come on, I want to help you. Amen. You know, I'm so thankful. I told my husband and I have tell people, I've always been bad about just being in real hyper, just putting things everywhere. I'd, I, my kids would always seem like kind of messing a lot of times before I was going to work or somewhere. And I just got to the place and say, Lord, you know where they are. I don't know. And then he'd give me a thought. No, it wasn't my thought. It was God's. And I'd go there and there they were. And I'd thank him. And, you know, I've heard people say, oh, don't give him all those little things. Oh, if I can't give him the little ones, I'll never get the big ones. So, you know, right. If I can't believe in the little ones, I'll never believe in the great big things he can do. So he is a mighty, powerful God. You know, I thought, you know, we shouldn't as people have to let our country go down to down the tubes because we are not doing what we need to do. I yes. thought in Second Chronicles 7, and, I believe it's 7 and 14, he says, it's my people, my people. He didn't say the sinners. So it's not up to the sinners. Right. It's my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. We have wickedness in us. We're not totally free of sin till we go home. Then, you know, he will hear our cry. He will, I'm not reading, saying that right. And he will forgive our sins and heal our land. And, you know, I thought, you know, we are the ones to blame. We are the ones to blame. As I was talking this morning, you can't testify in workplaces. No, I have. I have. I believe that when God institutes for you to talk to somebody, He'll make the way that it'll be okay. You know, I, I, I thought, you know, God is a, a great, good God, but we have said and let Him tell us we can't pray. We can pray in Walmart if you want to. Go ahead and do it. I thought I used to tell people and say, I'll pray that you come to church. No, you need to pray with them right now that they get saved. You know, they might not live to get to the church. You know, but you learn along the way as a Christian what things you need to do, but I, I came on business for the Lord. Amen. He's looking to see what kind of praise I'll give him, and he deserves, or he deserves it all. Amen. Amen. Somebody else? I'd be remiss if I didn't. I told him. He's probably from, not know where was that? No, 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 no. Praise His holy name. I just want to thank Him all. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Someone else. You no, know, it only took one person to take prayer out of schools. One person. Think of it. How many of us stood in here? Probably 30? Every one of us let one person take yeah. prayer out of school. Yes. Shame on us. Yes. Shame on us that we don't take a stand. Amen. Like a brother stood there a little bit ago. I think every one of us ought to take a stand. Amen. 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 Come on. You're either with me or you're against me. Come on. Amen. We're going to stand for the Lord. We're going to stand for the devil. Amen. Huh? Amen. We need to stand for the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, Dave. Hey, we got to do it. Yeah, that's Lord. Hey, my buddy, brother John, man. But the Lord, we like the Lord. That's right. I bet preachers was here, man. But still, son, but if it's in God, where are we going? Amen. 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 Are we going to start loving the Lord? Yeah. We need to, people. Yeah. We want revival. Yeah. We need to stand yeah. and listen to the Lord. Listen to God. Give us something that we want. 
think you're like, well, you know what it happens? I think that's really why it won't give us anything. Anything else that we'd like to have. You know, if we get praising for our little things that He's given us, why shouldn't He give us anything else? Amen. Give the last speech tonight. Just yeah. find the Lord. 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 Yeah. Lord. Lord. Lord, tell us something on your heart. Do it. They want you to run around the church running. But if it ain't God's will, don't do it. If it ain't His will, don't do it. Somebody else got testimony tonight. Somebody ought to be praising the Lord. Someone else. I want to praise the Lord and thank you for saving my soul. You know, before I got saved, I was in the bar, the strip club, you name it, I've been there. And you know, he, he saved me from all that. Y'all need to live better. Yeah. Amen. I just want to praise him and thank him. Just can't thank him enough. Come to love. Amen. Amen. Someone else. Test bunny on the heart. You know, I'm truly thankful for each day the Lord gives me. I'm just surprised the way I am, you know, and I say it's all for the Lord. I should have been a lot worse shape than I am, then, you know. And it's the Lord. I know that God praised Him every day for me. You know, Ronnie was talking not too long ago about how our country, the Christians, are, as a whole in the United States, is not standing up for our. That's right. And it's like you say, one person, you know, years ago, MacArthur lost the cross. MacArthur, nothing now. You notice, Jackson lost the picture in the school. Something that simple, you well, know. Well, why can't we stand up and say if they want it there, leave it there? But we let them bully us. We're afraid in courts. We're afraid of this. And, you know, and we need to pray for those people that God changes their hearts. You That's know? right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Somebody else. Bible stands that word. I thank him for so much. I said, you know, just like I, I go back and think, you know, what my life is like, where the Lord brought me from. And I said, you know, I talked this morning to a guy when I got saved. I said, I was, I was working down in Bryanford. And I said, you know, we, we, I mean, we, that's part of place. I mean, we knew every night where we were going, what bar we were going to do, what group we were going out with. And a, a preacher was talking to me and he came to me and he was back in where the locker room was. And he said, you might be saved. I thought, well, yeah. He said, I need mean, tonight. And I mean, that just don't need for it. Because I, I thought about it. I thought, you know, I can't live that. And you know, it just seemed like in my heart's mind, I could see the Lord turn around and said, I called him. And you know, and it just scared me. Down, I, I mean, I've been in church most of my life, but I, never, I didn't know the Holy Spirit. And I, I said, you know, I, I gave my heart to the Lord where anybody anyway walked through, I do not remember. And I says, I didn't say mm -hmm. much about it. And where the scripture came from, he said, if you did not be before man, I will not be before my father. I thought, where did that come from? And so I told my buddy, he said, Gary, he said, you can't do that. You know what you like. I said, all I can do is do my best. And I said, it's been 30 some years. You know, I failed some, and I said, I just keep, uh, it's like a little child I watched. When Sue had Shannon, Shane here, he was a baby, and I watched him, and I got to say about that time, the Lord said, that's you right there. You watch him fall. Eventually, you'll see him running down that hallway. And that's what happened. You know, I watched him grow up, and I don't think about that in my life. But I said, I remember the things that happened. I said, we was at the plant, and I said, we've only beaten a half hour before quitting time, talking about what are we going through and everything. Well, there was about four or five of us. We got together. And went back in this room and prayed for the plan. And my boss, and we talked about that night. He said, they're going to stop us from doing that Sunday. The boss came up to me and said, Gary, I don't want to ask who or what, or who, which ones you're going with. But he said, my boss said for me to tell you, you got to stop that. And I said, you know, I, I cried back. I said, you know, we knew this was coming. But I said, you know, we can meet there and talk about what, what are we going to and how, how late we stay. Not one more we spoke. But I said, we got four people praying for this plan. But I said, you know, we knew this was coming, but I said, we still can pray where we're at. But you know, I, I think of all these things in my life that happened and how the Lord has brought me through it. And I am so thankful. I said, I look at even my toys, and the Lord has furnished those things because He knows I enjoy them. Better. But you know, I, I know I, I, I don't, I'm not this, I'm trying. I keep pushing forward and trying to be a witness, and that's what my work has always been. You know, I, I'll sit for hours and talk to these elderly people, you know, when I'm done working. And I said, you know, Lord seemed like that, that's where he wants me. 
And I thank you so much, and I just praise you for everything in my life. Amen. God bless you, brother. Yes. Testimony on the heart. Ain't one at all. Amen. Amen. Now I'll say one other thing here and then I'll get out of the way. No, I was, I mean Johnny was up to seeing John's mom in the hospital about a week or so ago. You know, even if I go out to her house. When you look at her, she's got a big grin on her face, Jamie. And shame on us. Shame on us. We can't even get a smile in God's house. The lady's bed fast. She hardly ever can get out of bed. But you can walk in that house and look at her and she's got a smile. Great right, big smile on her face. Just a pleasant smile. I talked to her up here at night and I said, Looks like you feel a little better. 
she said, the Lord took care of it again. And why can't we be like that? God's people. Why can't we be like that? She can't even get out of bed. We get out and get in God's house. I watched somebody. You wouldn't smile. Somebody was tickling your toes. Now I'm talking about all of us. You know, not I ain't pointing nobody out. But it's truth. It's truth. Anybody else got a testimony on our four cult singers? Amen. Amen. Come on up, sis. If you got a testimony on your heart, go ahead and give it. Whatever Lord appreciate the obedience that we've had tonight. It's been a good place to be. Amen. Amen. And uh, I hope tonight that the message that God uh, I feel like has given me will be the uh, will stir our hearts. We've already been stirred, I think, tonight. Amen. I appreciate Brother Derek. I'm going to tell you, Brother Derek, you'll never, as long as you obey the Spirit, you'll never, you'll never see me stand up and say, sit down. Amen. 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 When you get out of the will of God and the Spirit tells on you, now I'm liable to set you down. But as long as you're minding God, we're going to be all right. Amen. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 16 tonight. I want to read one verse. And this verse has been on my heart all afternoon. We were over to nursing home, and I actually preached out of 1 Corinthians there uh, about it. And I asked the question, do you believe? And then I, uh, while I was studying those scriptures, I looked over and I saw this one. And boy, it began to eat at me. And I sat here while ago. And some of you don't think, when you see me have my phone out, don't think I'm on Facebook answering people's messages. I'm sitting up, I, there's, a, I, there's a dictionary app on here, and I love to find out what words mean. And when Dave was getting wound up there a while ago, I ran across and was reading, not writing this down on this word uh, that I'm going to preach on tonight, or a couple of these words I'm going to preach on tonight. And I'm telling you, I was about to come out of there shouting just reading the definition of what these words mean. Amen? Now, we take this verse sometimes, but I don't think we use it enough in chapter 16 and verse 20. Chapter 16 and verse 20. I don't think we grasp what God is speaking to us in this verse. And this is what it says. And the God of peace shall. What's that word shall mean? Amen. That's the most powerful word in there. That means it's going to happen. Shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Father, I just thank you for your mercy, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for every soul that's present in the house of God for their prayers. We've seen answered, Lord God, for the deliverance you've brought, Lord. For the obedience today, God, for the people minding the Spirit of God. For the wonderful singing we've heard tonight. But God, as we look at this verse tonight, God, help us to stand in this last day and realize that we're more than conquerors through Him that loved us in Jesus' name. And amen tonight. You may be seated. Amen. I'll be honest with you tonight. I'm feeling a little bit bad to cost to amen about this, uh, this verse of scripture here tonight. And I want to bring out three different words. And then listen out of this. It said, the God of peace shall bruise. And I want to stop right there. And I want to preach what does that word bruise mean? Amen. And, uh, and some uh, of the things. And I realize uh, when we think about a bruise, we think about, uh, about a dark spot on our skin uh, because we've run into something been poked by something or different things that cause it tonight. But let me give you some Webster uh, definitions of what that word means uh, as it's used as a transitive verb. Uh, and, uh, man, Lord, and that's a hundred dollar word we ought to uh, write down right there. Uh, but that word tonight, I, I, I about shouted because this is the things uh, that I began to write down there a while ago. The word bruise as a transitive verb uh, means to disable 
anymore. It means to batter or to dent or to inflict, to bruise, to break down by pounding or crushing a wound or to injure tonight. And I begin to think about those things. We live a lot of times and we allow the devil amen, to come into our life. I appreciate what she shared a while ago. Amen. How did she begin to rebuke the devil when the report came in on her granddaughter? But we allow the devil to come in and to beat us up one side and down the other. We allow him to control our thoughts and our minds and our feelings. Amen. Listen, we've given more than each brother. We've given him a mile. Amen. We give him the credit and the glory sometimes. Amen. But I want you to know today, amen, the Bible said it's Submit yourself therefore unto God and resist the devil and he that shall flee from you. And so therefore I think that it's time, brother, and may listen that we disable the powers and the wiles of the devil in the name of Jesus. I think it's time we start beating him up instead of allowing him to afflict us. I think it's time it's still him tearing us down amen, emotionally and spiritually. It's time we start working on him. Oh, listen, brother. I want you to understand this about the devil. I don't have to find him just to show he's already defeated. Jesus conquered him. Amen. Listen, and when he went to the cross and died for my sin, I want you to know, brother, amen, he beat him in the ground that day and he stood up three days later handing the keys and the death and hell he conquered sin amen as a man not as God he conquered sin as a man then because he lives I can live also today hallelujah amen I think it's about time Amen, listen. Amen, David, I want you to go open that door over there for just a minute and just hold it open for just a minute until I tell you to shut it because this is what we're fixing to do right here at this church. Amen, devil, I want you to know that according to the authority of the word of God, it's time you leave this building. It's time you leave this church. It's time today that you leave the body of Christ. It's time today that you take and quit robbing her joy. It's time that we're taking back our testimony. We're going to take back our soul. We're going to take back our shot. We're going to run and praise God around this building. We're going to see our people. Glory to God, come in our flesh and order of sin. In the name of Jesus, get behind us, Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah tonight. Praise me to the Lamb of God. Brother, it's time. I'm sick and tired of it. I don't know about you. Amen. We come to the house of God. God stirs our hearts and get up Monday morning and he hits us right square back in the face. Amen. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, Sister Cheryl. I'm tired of the excuses. Amen. I'm tired of singing the blues. I want to sing the songs of Zion. Listen, I'm tired of my heart being hung in the willow. I'm going to get it down, brother, and I'm going to sing for the glory of God. Listen, if we don't stand now, we never will stand because, brother, amen, the Bible said strengthen those things that remain, and we need to make sure, amen, and lest till he come and take our candlestick out. My, my, my. And the God of peace. And the God of peace. You get that? And the God of peace. I don't know what's been going on lately. I haven't said much to around it. I haven't slept well for about the last two weeks. I really don't know why, just tossing and turning. I had trouble going to sleep. Don't sleep very long, wake up, and just flip and flop and toss and turn, and I worry about waking her up. Sometimes I think maybe I ought to just get up and go on into the other room so maybe she can rest. Oh, but I want you to know, brother, I'm tired. Hey, man, listen, I'll lay my head down in peace according to the word of God and rest all my cares upon my Savior. 
because my Bible said he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Brother, that not only means my health, that not only means my spiritual things. Then he come on back in and sit down, son. And then listen, that means my finances. That means he's going to have to leave my family alone. Brother, listen, I took my kids on the night. We stood before an order and we dedicated our kids to God. He can't have my kids, Sister Cheryl. Hey Amen. Listen, that's God's children that He put in my care, and I want you to know today He can't have them. He can't have my marriage. No, he can't have my health until God's finished with me. When I've sung my last song, when I glory to God, when I preach my last sermon, when I told my testimony one last time. Listen, I lay my life down and close it out and sleep and say I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. His fault is laid up for me a crown of righteousness and not to me only but to all of them that love him. Amen. Glory to God tonight. Hallelujah. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. Not that. Under my feet. What does that word under mean? <laughs> oh my. A position. Oh glory. That is below or beneath. Hey Amen. He's not on the same level that we're on. Glory to God, hallelujah. I told you I'm feeling bad the cost tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he's not on the same level that he's on. <laughs> Amen. Say, Chairman, he can't go into the throne room. <laughs> Amen. We've got a brother and a sister that's come halfway around the world. <laughs> Amen. Listen, that it might be better pastors back at their home, that they might win their family, that they might win their neighbors. I want to God we'd have some people right here that rise up and say, count me in. Amen. I want to help. Listen, brother. I want you to realize something, son. Come here just a second. Amen. You want you to know this. If God is for you, there ain't nobody can be against you. When God opens a door, there ain't nobody can shut that door. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. The God that called you, the God that ordained you to preach the gospel, He's the God of all the earth, all the universe, brother. He's God of all. Amen. And the devil that fights against us, He is beneath us today. Amen. He's not going to be able to look us in the eye. Amen. Because our eyes are going to be focused upon the master, my friend. Why? Because he is defeated. It's not I that defeated him. I didn't win this battle. But Christ already won it for me today. Man, I'm about out of breath. A forward, a forward direction that passes Something below. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it all behind. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, there ain't nothing worth looking back to, Dave. Amen. There's no glimmer. There's no hope. There's no joy. There's no peace. And most of all, there's no God back there. My God lies out ahead of me. Hey Amen. Listen, I don't serve a God that said, all right, there it is, brother, you can have it. But every day, my God walks the dark hills for me. My God walks through the valleys for me. He walks through the deep waters for me. He said, when thou comest through the waters, they shall not overflow thee. When thou passest through the flood, when thou walkest through the fire, it shall not hurt thee. I want you to understand something today. Hey Amen. We're born again. Holy Ghost filled child the living God and therefore amen listen we are made more than amen not part way but more than a conqueror for he under loved us <laughs> let me read this and put this right in behind it and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet and put him in a condition <laughs> Of subjection. 
Do you get that? Yes. A position of subjection. Yes. What does that mean? Instead of me dancing to his tune, yes. hey amen, he's got to dance to mine. Yes. Hey amen, when I say go, brother, he's got to go. Yes. Why is that, preacher? Because, listen, we have been given authority over him. And that we are not his servants today. We are the servants of the Most High God. I don't serve the devil. I don't serve any of his nymphs today. I serve Jehovah God. And God has overcome. And we win. Yes, amen. <laughs> Underneath means down to defeat, to ruin, or down to death. Can I tell you? I already know his destiny. I, don't, I know mine. Hey Amen, y'all preacher. I just don't know where God's leading me, brother. I do. It's a place called heaven. We need to get to that. I just don't know what God's got in plan for me. Brother, I do. He's leading me beside the still waters. He's restoring my soul. Amen. He's prepared it. Oh, glory to God. He's prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Come after me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He said, I know the place that I have for you. Brother, he knows that heaven is our home and God will see us through. But the devil's destiny is the lake of fire. We need to remind him of that. <laughs> Come on now. We need to start reminding him. Amen, that his destiny has already been settled. Hey man, I know where he's going to spend eternity. Gang, that's in the lake of fire and brimstone. While he's roasting, but I'll be praising. While he's roasting, I'll be resting. Glory to God. I want you to realize he said to me, subject to the authority or control or guidance or instruction of another. It means lesser or lower than. I want you to understand something. I don't have any loved ones that's turned into angels. You know why? Because my loved ones that have left and gone on to heaven, they're the sons of God. Amen. Amen. And I realize as a man, according to the word of God, that we're a little lower than what the angels in this physical house that I'm in now. But wait till you see my new home. <laughs> wait till you see its beauty rare. Nothing down here can compare. Amen. There's a place the Heavenly Father is bidding me that I'm going to occupy for free. Glory to God down here. We have to pay. The farmers make a big old payment over there for that little house we live in, that piece of ground. But I'm going to land. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Are you believe in God? Believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. The Bible does say, mansions. It doesn't say rooms. He said mansions. If it were not so, I told. I would have told you. In other words, if there's no mansions there, I told, if, it, if it's just rooms, he'd have told me rooms. Amen. Amen. And the God of peace shall bring Satan under your feet. Here's my last word. Shortly. I wanted to get up and scream when I read this. <laughs> Means in an abrupt manner. Boom. <laughs> well, preacher, when did he do that? <laughs> Father, it is finished. <laughs> Into thy hands. I command my spirit and he gave up the ghost. Amen. Instantly the devil was defeated, brother. Amen. Those people running around saying that he had to go to hell. 
had to take the keys. I don't believe that, brother. I want you to understand. He Bible said he went into the older parts of the earth and preached to the spirits that were in prison, and he led captivity them that were captive, and he led them on high. What did he do for them, preacher? He bruised Satan under their feet. Amen. In an instant, brother, he overcome death, hell, and the grave. I want you to understand something about the grave. The grave was defeated. Brother John, before his body was laid in there, there was no grave ever made that could hold the body of Jesus. And I want you to know that there ain't no grave going to hold my body. And down glory to God. When that trumpet sounds, I'll be changed and caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Abruptly, in a twinkling of an eye, the church will be changed. Amen. Amen. I'm tired of having, I'm tired of having a week's meeting and not having revival. Amen. Don't get mad at me. I'm tired of having week's meetings. What are you saying, preacher? Brother, I remember when revivals would go five and six and eight and ten weeks. Amen. We had Brother C.T. Townsend just had one last well, about four months or so down there. Twelve hundred and some people gave their life to God. And we say, oh my, I just don't think my body can handle that. I'm going to tell you, brother, you get your body under the power of God, and you'd be surprised what the new body could do. I'll be honest with you. I sat there and I thought, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to be able to preach at all tonight. My throat is so rough. It's hurting. Every time I try to swallow, it seems like there's a big old gob or something there. I don't mean to be nice to you about that when I say that. Hey, Amen. But I want you to know, brother, it may sound hoarse right now. Hey, Amen. But I feel like I can holler boo at the devil under the authority of Jesus Christ not under the name of Jamie Fortner but in the name of Jesus Christ I want him to know amen we're moving upward and we're moving onward and we shall rise and build the church upon the name of our every name the name of Jesus are you tired of it? how many is tired of it? how many is tired of it? say I'm tired of it devil Get behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus. Get behind me. In the name of Jesus. Get your hands off my family. Come on, say it. Get your hands off my family. In the name of Jesus. Get your hands off my body. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Get your hands off my finances. In the name of Jesus, get your hands off my song. Come on. In the name of Jesus, get your hands off my testimony. I am the servant of God. I am victorious. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm filled with the spirit of the living God and the power of his resurrection I shall not be defeated now brother don't go out that door and say well you know that was just a bunch of words that we just said what the preacher said I'm going to tell you today amen we need to start saying those words we need to start speaking those words. Amen. Why? Because the Bible gives us authority to. Amen. If we, listen brother, now I want you to know you can't speak that if you're not submitted yourself unto God. Amen. But if your heart is not submitted to God, we've got an order right there for that. If there's something between you and God hindering you from the power of God, we can fix that. Amen. You've got as much Holy Ghost in your life as what you want. You've got as much prayer life in your life as what you want. You've got as much knowledge of the Word of God as what you want. You're seeing as many of the people of your family as saved as what you truly want. If that's what you want, he said, Ask and seek and find and knock, and it'll be open to you, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, 
You don't sound free will Baptist. Uh, first, I want you to understand something about me. I'm a Christian. And I haven't preached one word tonight that's not in the 1611 King James Version. Amen. I believe God's authorized version to the English nation. English speaking nation. Amen, preacher. Amen. I believe God meant it for you and I. Amen. It's good. It's good for every proof. Brother Derek, I hate to tell you this, son, but it's good for doctrine as well. Come on. It's good for all old suffering. It's good for evangelism. Amen. It's good for it all, brother. If we'll take it, if we'll believe it, if we'll trust it, if we'll speak it, if we'll live it, it'll happen in our lives. But if we get up tomorrow morning, you say, well, I'm just so wore out. Because I'll be honest with you, after a message like this, you ask my wife, I'm dragging going in the house. When the power of God, and I know others know what I'm talking about, when the power of God takes over this body like it has mine tonight, glory to God, you're weak. I heard somebody say, you're weak. I'm going to tell you, I'll be tired when I get home. Glory to God, I'll sleep good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll get up in the morning and say, well, Lord, you sure did bless our service tonight, last night, but God, you're the still same God. Amen. This morning is what you was last night. Amen, Brother Julius. God's going to supply your need, brother. Amen. Again, he's going to open a door for you that no man can shut. Amen. To proclaim the everlasting gospel of this kingdom today, brother. The lost and dying world. And remember this. If God be for you, who can be against you? Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to come back Wednesday and we pop in our bubble gum? I realize everybody ain't as outgoing as Sister Cheryl. <laughs> Don't get mad. Let me say something. Let me finish my statement here. You ever read her post on Tuesday? Her post on Tuesday says this, for you that are not on Facebook. Hey, did I tell you this is Tuesday and tomorrow's Wednesday and I get to go to the house of God and I get to study the word of God. I get to see my brothers and my sisters. We get to sing together. We get to fellowship together. We get to hug one another's neck and praise our Jesus. Did I tell you I love Jesus? We need some more Cheryl's around here. I, love uh, I know you do, sister. You know, I get up on Tuesday and I think tomorrow's Wednesday. And I get to go back to church. There's times I can't even walk around my house. And I'm still saying, I'm going. I'm going to go to church tomorrow. And Gary said, you can't get out of bed. But I Amen. And you know, that's the Lord, Jamie. Amen. The Lord helping me. As your faith is. So be it. That be like me going out there and plowing up my garden, planting a row of potatoes or three or four rows of potatoes, go back inside and say, Them seeds will never come out of the ground. There's no use to go back and worry about it. Can I tell you? Amen. If I go, me and Hank went Friday afternoon, Hank came down. We went up on the hill and we uh, uh, sowed some seed in some food plots for the deer to hunt over. Come here in, in a month or so. <laughs> I'll probably go back up tomorrow wanting to look and see if any of them seeds are sprouting. <laughs> Brother, that's the way I am with God on my prayers. <laughs> 
Amen, and that's the way we need to be. Listen, brother, I, I'm tired of coming to church and going through the motion. I, I, I only want to have been running around this house. But tonight, brother, we need to learn to let go. You say, oh, preacher, I just don't get that emotional. Maybe you would if you'd give it all to God. Listen today, brother, if you're ashamed to shout, if you're ashamed to run for Jesus, amen, listen, you, you'll never run. We need to make sure we realize he's defeated. He's bruised under our feet. Bruised under our feet. And he was put there abruptly. Don't give him space. Don't give him, don't give him the time of day. Amen. If you've been listening to honky tonk music, turn it off and maybe turn on K Love or W E M M. Amen. And I realize some of them folks on W M M need cut off, especially when they get over them infomercials. Amen. But there's times that you and I need to hit. Hey man, listen, I, we're driving up down that road. You know what? That's a good time to pray. Say, good morning, Jesus. I want you to know, Lord, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for my life. I, God, would you watch over? Would you bless her? Would you prosper her day? Would you give her favor in the eyes? Do you play that? Play that? Absolutely. Give her favor in the eyes of her employers and her co-workers. Help her to see that she's a godly woman. God, would you put your hands around my children today, God? Would you put Protect them. Let their light shine unto those that they so school with. Preacher, do you really pray that way? You ought to be in the car sometimes. Amen. The old saying, you ought to be the flower on the wall. I'm not telling you that I'm always perfect. I'm not telling you I'm always speaking. As the Pentecostals say, I'm not telling you I'm always speaking faith. Amen. There's times I get upset over things, absolutely. Oh, but glory to God, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know He lives. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. I don't need to go look inside the tomb and say that He's not there, brother. I know He's alive. Listen, brother, I, oh, glory to God, I love this. My Jesus is not on a cross. Amen. Don't oh, listen. You're not going to see me. Amen. Listen, wearing a cross. Amen. With Jesus hanging on it. You're not going to see me sharing a picture with Jesus wearing a crown of thorns. Amen. Why? Amen. He'll never wear a crown of thorns. They'll never draw nails through his hands and his feet. Amen. But listen, one of these days, brother, amen, he'll be crowned king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. Oh, wait a minute, that's a Pentecostal word. Don't use it in the Baptist church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> Are you ready? We done run him out. <laughs> Don't you know that y'all drag him back in? Don't come in here to youth group tomorrow night. Said, I just don't know if I'm going to make it or not. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> because he said he was able to keep that which I've committed and they hear him against that day. What does that mean, brother? That means I'm going to finish this race and I'm going to walk into the pearly gates and down that street of gold bow before his throne and say, Lord, I love you and thank you for saving me. Uh huh. Don't come back on Wednesday night and say, Preacher, the devil's beat me up all week long. Is he going to come at us? Yes. But at the mention of the name of Jesus, the devil has to flee. So all this week, go around singing, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. I realize I've got enemies. I realize I've got people that know my past. 
Hey man, listen to me. I, say, I never had anything to do with that fella. But I want you to understand that Jesus loves me, that Jesus cares for me. I am his and he's mine forever. And glory to God, we're headed to the same place. Amen. We're headed to heaven, church. Be encouraged. Amen. Because God is getting ready to move. Amen. And when God says move, amen, you better not have your tent stakes drill very deep. Amen. Because a church on the move. Amen. We'll go up and out today. But if we're content to be like the two and a half tribe, the tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Ephraim, maybe it's half the tribe of Manasseh, half on two and a half tribes. I don't remember quite exactly who they was at the second, but said, we want to just stay here. Our wives and cattle, you know, all our cattle's right here. We really don't want to go into that land over there. Everything's good right here. You know what happened? They were the first people conquered. They were the first people led astray into idolatry. The tribe of Dan got so bad that he's not even mentioned in the book of Revelation. God blotted his name out. Went so far. Listen, I'm talking about God's people. Oh, preacher, I just don't believe in that backslide and stuff. These people went so far away from God, God blotted their name out of his book. Never to be remembered anymore. Come on now. Don't you get mad at me. I'm preaching to you the word of God. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Hey, we ought to be up. We ought to be up and sing glory, glory, yes. glory. Yes. Amen. I realize this service has been long. Amen. I want my, I'm going to get, get with my brother back there and we're going to bring him back. We're also going to set an offering plate back there. If you have anything you'd like to bless him with in his ministry, we're going to schedule a date with him to bring him back. I heard him preach. He can preach. She can sing. <laughs> Just telling you the truth about it. Sister One, he just got her CDs back there. Church has already wrote out a check to be given to her to help her in her ministry. If she's blessed you tonight, amen, go back there and buy one of them CDs. You say, preacher, I ain't got no money. I promise you she'll give you one. Amen. You ain't got a dime. She'll bless you tonight if you can't be a blessing to her. I know her. How do you know her, preacher? I've been around her for a while. Because I'm going to tell you, you can't outgive God. Amen. He that soweth sparingly <laughs> shall reap sparingly. But he that soweth bountifully, oh, preacher, I know you was going Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> Remember my vision this morning 50 people give me $50 before the night's over. I only need 49 more. <laughs> Wait well, I a minute, we ain't got 49 people in the house. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing on that. Please, don't nobody, don't nobody take this serious. You see, tomorrow's my birthday. I'll be 50. <laughs> I just wanted some spending money to go to Cabell's. That's all I wanted. <laughs> That's all right. I got wrong. Done. She's taking me. God is good. All the time. So why shouldn't we praise Him? So who's going to come Wednesday night with a testimony? Amen. Who's going to come with the praise on their lips? Enter into His courts with praise and thanksgiving. Who's going to get out and tell somebody, man, you ought to have been at church tonight? Huh? Come on. Who's going to spread the good news? God is alive and well, and the church is not dead. Amen. But we're alive and well. Sister, want you to come back and get another song. If you're here tonight and you're not ready to meet Jesus, or you've got a burden on your heart that you cannot carry. And listen, we ask God to give us burdens for our lost people. We Listen, we are not to ask God to take them away. We need more of burden for us sinners. Amen. I realize we've been praying for these people here. 
Amen. Hundreds of names on there and only a handful have been saved. And I want to buy, buy a record on them. One of those names is sitting in the back corner. Amen. And bounced around by 15 minutes earlier. Tell me God can't save and keep. Let's stand tonight. If you need to pray, this order is open.